Yo, bro. On, on, go on. Are you good, yeah? Yeah, man. Bless you. Yeah, I'm all good. It's looking, sun, it's looking like the sun's out behind you, man. It's all right here, man. Looking bright today. Yeah. How are you, man? How's things? Uh, good, man. Good. Same old. You? Yeah. Yeah, man. The same old, same old. Just want to thank you for coming on. Yeah. Obviously, you're one of the people that we really wanted to get on because we just want people that are going to come on and speak that real stuff, do you know what I mean? Like, and we see you, a selective few of players as one of those people that we know are just going to come and speak that that real talk, no gimmicks, do you know what I mean? I uh, respect, I respect. Yeah? So how's quarantine, man? How you, how's it, how are you handling it? You know what, yeah? It's, it ain't been that bad still. It is what it is, isn't it? Um, just fucking... Like I said, it is what it is, just... Yeah. Training, just chilling, too much chilling, but you know what? Yeah, it's it's just one of them things, isn't it? You gotta make the best out of bad situations. Mm. No, definitely, definitely. So what we're gonna we're gonna talk about? Um, obviously, we're gonna talk about your upbringing, like where you come from, and basically just what made you who you are today. Like, obviously, I'm from London, so I'm quite ignorant to what's out there. I always just think about London. What is it like growing up in Wolves and your situation when you were growing up there? Um, like, I've always said in it, like, I didn't have a, a rough, rough upbringing, uh, upbringing. It's not like um, I went without things or whatever. It was, it was tough. And Wolves is a, a rough area, don't get me wrong, but... I've never com I would never compare Wolverhampton to the likes of, of London and, and Birmingham. Um stuff goes down there like there is in, in every other area, in it. But um when I was growing up it was like London was always advanced or when we were growing up it would be people getting beat up, people getting rushed or whatever. Mm. But them times in London it was like people are getting stabbed. This, that, and the other. So then when someone from London would come to Wolves, they made that the new normal in Wolves. And they seemed like that's the that's the thing. Like, yo, you can't yeah. be like this, you know what I mean? So um it was rough still, but it wasn't mm. I'm not gonna sit here and I've always said I'm not gonna sit here and say like I come from the, the real, real trenches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but like you know what I mean? Not 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 places where it's really literally kill or be killed. Like it, yeah, it, it looked enough to have. No, so like, you. I feel like just my the age that I was at that time was just like you can get out if you want to get out in it. Like there's a there's a way to get out, and I think being around the world or whatever. You, if you're in America or other countries and whatever, like if you're in it, you're in it. Like there's no there's no getting out. You can't leave that behind. Know what I'm saying so. Mm. So, do you think like when obviously you had a situation where you're when you were growing up, you were involved in like a few gang activities, and you you were straying towards that side, like the roadside? Would you say that was self inflicted? Then you it wasn't environmental. Um, no, it's definitely environmental where I was from, but at the same time, a lot of things played a part, like. You're, you're at age. I've always said it in it. Like kids now, the the it could be something to do with girls. It could be being bullied. It could be ego. There's so many factors that come come into it in it. But for us, it was just like this is where we're from in it. This is this is this is how it is. This is what happens. Um, we go about it this way. Um, and then it turned into gangs. Then it went. Mm. Like from this place or whatever, and then it kind of formed into a thing, and then you realize you got family members who are from this area, and then you come together, and then it's just a. You know, I mean, Wolves is quite a separate place. See, like now, the 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 money Wolves that are in this gang thing, it's like it's different areas. They're, these areas weren't even heard of back in the day. Yeah, but now it's different, so it, it kept changing, in it, but. Where we was, it just like our, our postcode was like a very big postcode. So it was like 
five or six different areas, or whatever. So like it wasn't a forced thing. It wasn't like you had to do it, but like it was the norm. You get me? Yeah. yeah. So would you say that like football was your way out, or did you make that conscious decision that it's like football or the roads, basically? Or was did did football just fall into your into your path? So like football's always been into me. So I've always always played and whatever, but like. I was always doing the road thing at the same time. So it was like being in the middle. It wasn't until I got to like 18, when I got stabbed and whatever, that I kind of had to make a decision of which way I want to deal with my life in, it, in general. So that's when it changed. But before that, it was literally both things. I'd be at my scholarship in Shrewsbury from Monday to Saturday, and then back home. In Wolves on Saturday, Sunday, mm. going to I don't know parties in in the ends and on a Saturday, and then things are kicking off and yeah, <laughs> I go back to, to back to my scholarship on Monday in Shrewsbury. Like nothing happened. Mm. Up until I was about eighteen, nineteen, I was literally playing both sides of it. So, so how do you think? Like, do you think? that was affecting you in terms of because obviously i know uh you were at wolves he didn't we didn't work out at wolves initially and then obviously you went on to shrewsbury um and it didn't work out there do you think that was a uh, indicate because of you were in 50 50 or do you think it was a, just an ability thing um both i think when i was at wolves i, I left when i was about 12 13 when i got released so and that was that was down to ability. I don't, that had nothing to do with upbringing or, or whatever. That was just generally down to ability. And then Shrewsbury was mentality because I, I, I come out of the scholarship and I was, there was only two of us out of about... So we had... There was our year. So we had second year and first year pro, uh, scholarships. And there was only two of us that got professional contracts. Yeah. So um, that was like me getting my, I got my pro contract, sorry. And then that was mentality then because I just felt like I made it. I'm still on the roads messing about, want to run up and down in stolen cars and mm -hmm. <sighs> thinking like I've hit the jackpot in it. So that I know now that Shrewsbury was a mentality because I went back pre-season in my first year pro and I did really well. And I just, my head was just, I don't know, it's mad to look back now. At the time, it was like normal, but when you look back now, I could have done a lot. Mm. So from from Shrewsbury, you obviously went on to, you went non-league and you actually destroyed the non-league setup. You scored nearly 100 goals at non-league. But initially, um, where you were at Hinkley, you got in a little situation as well. So obviously, you, as you said, you've been doing the 50-50 and you mentioned it earlier. You had that little stabbing incident. Obviously, you got the scar on your face. Um, how did that affect you going forward? Did you have to make a big decision at that point that it's either the roads or football? Yeah. One sec. Let me try to turn my wife off, see if it's better. Can you... All right, cool. Yeah, try that. It's off now. Is that better? Um, it's still loading up right now. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Um, no. Nah, yeah, much better, much better. That, like that that situation where I got stabbed, that wasn't even like a. It was a bit of a gang thing, but it weren't like a. Um, it were like a, a ends beef, right? What mm. involved in or whatever. It was literally. <laughs> you know what the joke thing about the whole situation was, yeah. Me and my me and my, me and my closest friend, yeah, my 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 right arm, we went out in Brom that night, and we was like, oh, we're going to it's called Bamboo, isn't it? Yeah. At these times now, yeah, it was like the best place to go. So we went there now. We got our little polo shirts on, a little Lyle and Scott polo shirt. We got Vans. When I brought Vans, like yo, we're gonna go. <laughs> get me done up. Went there now. 
the woman at the thing, you know, the little clipboard woman come with their little attitude, like, oh, you want to guess this? I'm like, nah, like, just want to come in. Just me and him, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, let me check. Walked off, come back, boom. Oh, you like I dress cool enough? You like, do you mean cool enough? I've come dressed exactly how you need to dress. <laughs> oh, the geese, she went, oh, just step aside a sec. The geese is behind us coming. I think they, I feel like I remember, yeah, one of the youths played for West Brom or Birmingham or something. All right. He had, he had Converse on, dress casual, T-shirt, everything, let them in. I'm like, how can we go from, like, I, so you basically tell us we've got to come in shoot and shirt, shirt, shoes and shirt, and we're not cool enough. Now it's, like, what's cool? Like, and I literally we looked at him and said, you know what, fuck these places, man, come. And then we went to the, obviously my boys and that was in a, new, a next club, innit? Mm. I'm like, yo, oh, listen, let's just stick to what we know, man. Fuck it, like, let's go. You get me? So we ended up going to the hood club. You get uh, me? Yeah. It's like, whatever. And obviously now, with, with our people and that, and then basically just kicked off after it with my bridge and that, and obviously now we all having it out, whatever, please come, whatever, and then kind of got caught sleeping after, and then obviously got sliced in it, but I don't even know what happened. Mm. But like a punch, you get me? It was like a sliding, and everyone's like, yo, you need to get off, rare, 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 all of this. I'm like, yo, what, what do you mean? Boom. Obviously now I've touched my face, now I'm like, yo, rah. Like that situation still, but like, obviously now after that, it's like, Literally one of them, like, yo, I knew you did it or whatever, kind of thing. Like, don't go to war. Or, obviously, at the time, I was doing well at football and non-league and that. And I knew people were kind of watching in it. So, like, I got a decision to make in it. Like, go to war with someone who ain't really got nothing to lose. He's, he's a big man at the time. He's older than me, way older than me. He's been doing this for years. Or... They were just late play out and just concentrate on my football for now and don't even go back on a on a rampage, you get me? Because mm. obviously, any bad, but obviously I was growing up in it throughout all of this. I'm growing up and I'm understanding things more and understand how to deal with things more and whatever. So, and I just kind of had that mentality in it. The next day I woke up, I'm like, yo, it's there now. Like, I ain't going to sit here and cry about it. Like, it is what it is. Like, let's just deal with it in it. Like, it ain't going nowhere. So, Though if it face up, we ever go to war. I ain't gonna. I, ain't, I could have easily. People are phoning me like, "Yo, where, 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 do this." Do. I'm like, "Yo, listen. If I'm gonna do anything, I want to do it myself. It ain't a thing like that." You know what I mean? So, um, I just took the decision to 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 just let it play out in it, and let me just concentrate on my football for now. I'm gonna go chasing someone down or whatever, and not do the. And try try to do the, the the good thing for me, not for anyone else, not for my pride, whatever. For what would be better for me personally. And I knew that I was close to getting some form of move from where I was at in clearing it. Mm. So I just took that the the big grown man to pursue that in it. If I yeah, that's real, man. That's real. My man, the week later, something might not happen. I can't say that, but. I didn't, I didn't go hunting for it, you get me? Um, yeah. I just thought, you know what, yeah. I was, what, 19, 19, 19? So I was at the age where money was everything at the end of the day. So what's going to make me money, you get me? Yeah. And at that time, that was the biggest way out of it, you get me? So. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's real, man, because a lot of people would have thrown their life away at that situation. So for you to come out of it and obviously now to see where you are now, you must look back at it and just realise that was a key moment of your life. And that is a, that was a big decision that you made. No, exactly. And you know what, yeah? I've, I've seen my man since, innit? Like, re quite recently. Like, and... My blood was boiling and whatever because what, he was more the principal, not of what happened like I've never looked at myself in the mirror and thought like oh yo I've got this big scar on my face like done this he's done that I'm like mm. grown up since that you get me I've, I've, I've changed like my mind my mindset's different from what it was then and it was just a the thing like you know what like I'm here now 
Like I don't know what he's doing, but like it ain't affecting me. I've I've grown from from when that from that day that that happened. I've gone from here to here. Yeah. So thinking different. I'm. You know what I mean? And like, I just, I took it like like you know what? Yeah. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a grown man. I can do my own things. I don't need my 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 people to do it or or whatever. So I ain't gonna sit there in the background and not do something and let people do it for me. If I can't, if I ain't willing to do it myself. So if I'm saying allow it and and or whatever, like I ain't trying to pursue something that happened this many years mm -hmm. ago, then I ain't gonna make my my, my people do it. But like, things don't work like that. And people, people have got that wrong about things. You know what I mean? Like, don't do something yeah. yourself. So. So after that, obviously you recovered and you made. Oh, you good? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Oh yeah. So after that, obviously you left. Um, you did your thing at Hinkley. You did your thing. You scored your goals, and obviously you got signed by Luton. Yeah. So from Luton, I know a couple people from Luton, and they say that you were just a killer out there. You were just pure goal scorer. How was your time over there? Uh no, I loved it. That was mm. my, um, met friends for life there. To just, I just got, I just got taken in. I just got loved from from de from day one, um, and now I just loved it there. I had a goal there when I got there, and I, I overachieved. Mm. It's okay. it, Luton is a is also quite a crazy area as well. Like. It's quite similar to London in terms of the madness that goes on in Luton. So even there, you were going from one situation and you could have potentially even went into another. Was me, there any like? I'm blind to it though because like yeah, I'm, I'm from a hood. I've grew up in a hood. I'm, I've grew up with men that are on road and whatever. So like me, like I'm walking around the town and whatever on my own and whatever. I'm like, this is not. Yeah, this ain't new to me. This is, you know what I mean. Mm. I know if I in the alleyway, like yo, don't go down the alleyway. Like the same way I wouldn't do it in walls. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know how to move? You know what I mean. My my mind's, you know what I mean. I'm I'm switched on to all them things. So I don't, when I was the whole time I was there, I didn't see no madness. They catch oh, for real. Close. So like it, to me, that was like I'm. I'm lived, that's the first time I properly lived. Obviously, I lived on my own in my scholarship, but that's the first time I've like got my own place and 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 set up shop and yeah. um, just just literally minding my business world, just concentrating on my football. Really, my boys used to come down every game and whatever. We used to chill after the game or whatever. But I, I didn't even, you know what? I didn't I didn't go out once in Luton, you know. For real, I didn't even that's know. That's crazy. Even though that, like, I knew they had an Oceana there because they had one in pool, but when, I never went once, you know. Right? Mm. So, in um, when you were doing your thing at Luton, like, when did you start hearing that? Like, obviously, you went to the championship. When did you start hearing that championship clubs were coming for you, how did that actually feel? Because that's a massive jump. No, nah, it's mad because obviously, you got brought from the conference to League Two. So, for me, that was, yeah, calm, like, we're in the league. Yeah. So I didn't hear nothing until my agent phoned me talking about uh spoke to Brentford they wanna wanna take you and all of this stuff. So I'm like, bro, I'm thinking like maximum it's like one maybe. Um but that weren't even my head, like I'm not even thinking that far ahead. I'm thinking like go do league two, smash league two, go league mm. one, smash two in that kind of that kind of format, but I just as soon as that came, it was like, wow, like mad. Like, yeah, like, and I just went down there and then, boom, signed straight away. I didn't even, they didn't even think about it. It was hard, because obviously they wanted to keep me and stuff, but we had this, we had a great relationship and whatever, and it was literally like, they didn't want to stop me to that level. And I didn't, I wasn't leaving on bad terms or anything. It was like, that's, this is my dream. Like I never thought it'd even be possible to play championship football. So the mutual agreement to like, yeah, cool. Like, it's yeah, good. as long as it works for both of us, then it's good and it happened. So when you got to Brentford, is that like when you were finally like, do you know what? 
I've made it. I've made it in this football team. Nah, because you know what? I thought I did. I <laughs> just jumped up mad compared to what I was on at Luton. Yo, I remember I wanted it um, about two years before. Yeah, I remember I was in Shoreditch or something randomly at some meal. And I seen some some, some geezers in an X6, a white X6. I'm like, yo, that car's my dream car. And I, as soon as I got to Brentford, I'm like, oh my god, I can get the X6. <laughs> did you did you cop it? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I got my little seven, <laughs> like, like yeah, I'm on this X6, yeah, 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 like an idiot. That's mad. Already, so I'm like, oh, got it. Um, but that point, I thought I made it until I went to preseason. We went to Florida, and then I realized, like, I'm like, I'm miles off it. Like, it's mm. saying a joke. Like, I've jumped three leagues or whatever. And, like, I did in the off season, I was training, like, trying to stay fit and whatever. I did whatever I could, but I got there, and it was like, I was so unfit. Like, I don't even think it was physically. I think it was literally the mental side of football. Like, mm. I jumped up four, three, four leagues, and it's like the passing. I'm like, I can't even felt, like figure out what what's what's going on. Like, <laughs> somewhere like the ball's gone, and by the time I get the ball next to me, and I don't even realize what's going on, and I'm losing it. Like, it was mad, and I'll never forget it because my agent always tells me now, like, yo, do you remember when? Because the director. Agent, Oh, what have you made us sign here? Yeah? Like, he, like, he can't keep up. Like, he's this, that, and the other. Like, ah, uh. like, wait, like, you know what I mean? And it's because I was, I wasn't fit enough. We were playing in training in Florida, and I was boiling hot. I just couldn't mm. keep up and do good, and I just had to adapt. And um, was there players I, that noticed that? Was there players that noticed? Did was people looking at you sideways? Like, why did we sign? Yeah. Felt that and and the football culture, yeah, the football the football world's like that. Most of people probably try to lie and say it isn't. It is. Mm. Like, people judge you, like your teammates judge you. And if you if you're not, a lot of the time, yeah, if the if if you're not good or whatever, they probably won't even like you for a while when you first sign. Especially the people that are in you, they probably dislike it, find a way not to like it because you know. <laughs> Like that in their head, so it's like, yeah. you know what I mean. But to be fair to the boys at Brentford, like we was all young. We had a very young, a lot of new signings that were young. It took a while, man. And it, yeah. you know, me, I think I scored like 17, 18 goals that season. And for me, I still didn't feel fully accepted. If that makes sense. Mm. But what was it that made you not feel accepted? No, I think I was accepted as a person, just maybe not as much as respected as a player. But that was just who, that's just how I play, even to this day. Like, I'm not a fancy footballer, innit? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not. Do you think that comes because you came from the non league? Do you yeah. think that was like the perception? Well, it is raw. Everything about me is raw. Like, I'm, me, I'm, I'm, I'm brute force. Like, you probably couldn't really tell me to not go to the gym and just work technically. Like, that's, that yeah. would just take me game out of me, you know what I mean? So, I've kind of accepted that and I've heard Troy say it as well, like, look, we're not the prettiest of players, you know what I mean? We're not, we haven't been brought up in that academy culture. We're not yeah, yeah. People with, with, with different, with, with bread different, you know what I mean? And I feel like, it, it's not even a personal thing, I don't, I, I don't own anybody accountable to it, I don't blame anybody. I, like, this is, I just learned, I've grew up to accept that like, that's how I play and that's how I've got to where I've got to. So I'm not going to change mm -hmm. and please people, please fans or whatever. Like, I've got to where I've got to because of the way I played. So, like, I didn't feel that until the start of the second season, just before I left. Yeah. And I think, I can't remember. Someone was like, yeah, we don't want you to leave and that. And I'm like, flipping out. Like, I don't feel like that last season. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But I remember coming yeah. back the season, the second pre-season at Brentford, and being confident because knowing that I've scored goals. of, I missed about, I scored 18, but I probably missed about 100 tappings. <laughs> Scoring the league in it, like, I've, it's my first season, like, 
I'll get off my own back and I can I know I know what I'm capable of now. I know this mm. is not compete at this level. And then when a couple of the players, like the senior players, are kind of like feeling as if they don't want me to leave, that give me that boost of confidence. It's a mad feeling. Kind of made me yeah. best highlight. Raw, like, yeah, respect me like that. But that was my own little insecurities in it. Yeah. So, like, obviously, with that big money that you started getting um, at Brentford, well, compared to what you were getting at Luton, um, when you went back to your to Wolves, for example. Now you're going back to Wolves in an X6. Everyone knows that you got money. How was that like on the ends? Were like, were you getting side eyed? Was there jealousy? What was it like going back there? No, nothing, man. Like, nothing. Again, it's not Wolves. Ain't Wolves ain't like that. Like that. It is, but like it ain't America. But that's it. Like in America, like you you come back to your ends or whatever, you, people are still gonna try to blow your head off or whatever. In in, in England, <laughs> like you need to get real out there. Don't get me wrong, but it, there's, there's places in the world that are a lot worse. So when yeah. I went back like that, it was, it was fun. Like, and every time I went back, I'm either I'm either going to my mum's or or my nans or whatever, or, and I'm with, or I'm with the boys. Yeah. So, it's so like, obviously, yeah, go on. And at the same time, man, I have to respect it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is, at, at this time as well, it's like two, three years on. Like, things have passed, man. We were, everyone was young. We all grew up from it. I, like, I chat, to, I chat to man from them ends now. Like, it's, it's, it's not even like that. And it's kind of like, we look at it now and laugh kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, at the end of the day, the things that were going on were never really that deep. No one really died. And you were... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete, like, nothing bad, bad really happened. Like, people were getting shot at and all of this, but no one died or... So, like, it was things that we could grow out of, innit? Mm -hmm. not have a... Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like, so with the... Um, obviously, you mentioned that when the money came, you bought the X6, right? Zaha recently... Um, speaking about like how to handle your money like financially that nobody really gets support do you like agree with that like, does is there any financial support given out to footballers once that big paycheck comes oh, it's 100 percent right 100 percent. and that's you know what yeah it's uh, it comes down to uh i'm gonna say parenting but that's not blaming the parents that's just how the mentality is growing up in a poverty. As it's, it's, it, we grow up, not to how to ma manage money, not how to handle it, not know what to do. Like I only started managing my money really when I I got to the prem, the first year in Burnley. Wow. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like mm. I'm, I check, like yo, I can get this car, where, where, where. And I brought my I brought the first thing I did, the only logical thing I ever did with my money, my first lump of money that I felt cool with, was buy my mum's house. And that was just because I just always had in my head I wanted to do that. And my mindset was that my brother was about three or four at the time. And my mindset was like, I can look after myself now, I'm a grown man. Like, I've made money, I can make money. Like, this is my job now, like, I can play football in it. Let me just sort my mum out, buy her a house, sort her out, and I, I can sleep at night then. And that's that was just my first priority. And then when I did yeah. that, and I still didn't know how to manage money, that was me. Like, I probably should have got a mortgage with that, if I'm being realistic. I should have mortgaged yeah. it. But my mentality was like, yo, you get cash, boom. I, I threw all my dough on that, on that house, got rid of everything I had. You know what I mean? But because I'm getting paid yeah. next month, or whatever, but like I said, I'm what I'm. I'm 28 now. I'm 29. Like it's only been like the last three years. I've really kind of clocked on to to certain things. Yeah, and it might be too being realistic. It might be too late, but it comes from childhood in it. And I blame. Yeah. But I'm only only people I'm blaming is society and, and the government because 
comes from school because they could teach us about all of these kind of things, but they want us in debt in it. And some debt's good. That's bad, facts. Bad debt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, until you instill that in your kids from day one, you're never going to know. And you, you can't blame anyone's mum or anything about that because it's, it's the rat race and that's how it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you take your mind out, learn it in school, until you take your mind out of it. And I'm lucky now, because I can sit here now and, and, and give it the big talk about you need to do this with your money and that with your money. It's only because I've, I've made quite a lot of money to the point where I need to start thinking about it. So it's like, oh, you need to start reading. But people who don't, don't, don't think like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you think that's something the FA should be instilling in, in, into, into footballers from young, from the academy days? Is that something yeah, the FA should should put in? There's, there's, there's things in place in it, but it's not just it's, it goes beyond footballers, bro. It's, it's the whole society, the whole society, because we we get trapped in this whole system of doing what the norm is. Everyone's been yeah. to school. Oh, so you need to be a teacher. You need to do this. You need to do that. Whatever, whatever. I don't care. I've said it a million times in a different million different interviews. Yeah, I don't care about Henry VIII. Henry VIII ain't, ain't done nothing for me in my twenty eight years of age. I don't. <laughs> it's a, it's facts. It's facts. That multiple work. Yeah, it made no difference to my life. And you teach me about that. You know what I'm saying? There's a way. To, there's, there's a way. To, taught them the right way. Would be a whole lot better. The whole country would be a whole lot better. It's a, it's, it's a fact, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I ain't going to sit here and, and, and preach like you should do that because I've done it myself. I spent money yeah. I didn't need to. I've only just learning, but I'm only learning because I believe that I've just been put in a position where I've kind of realised that I'm going to have to learn. You know what I mean? Because I've always yeah. had years in... I'm not just going to give my money to someone and trust them, someone I don't know, to deal with my money and finance my money and whatever. And then come five years down the line and tax me. Talking about I've got this bill to pay, that bill to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, never. In control of it myself and, and own it myself. And so. Now we can fast forward. If we fast forward now, you mentioned obviously we were at Brentford. And then Burnley came through. And yeah. when you went to Burnley that first season, you went crazy. You went crazy. You got the player of the year, top yeah. scorer, right? Yeah, what was yeah. that like? What was, that's, that's, now that's big recognition now. Nah, that, that, that was proper surreal that year. I think I came into my own there. I feel like that group of players that I went into with the humblest I've ever come across. No one had an ego. No one had any chip on their shoulder. Um, and the whole club was just run in the football side of things. Just The routine was just bang, 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 bang. This is what it is. This is what it is. Either get involved or that is the end. Like, whatever. Um I spoke to the manager at Brentford at the time and he was telling me, just me, me and Sean Dyke go to so I was going to go to Hull. Oh, OK. Um, it was literally a, a hair thing, a hair string of the, the choice to, to make, where to go. Mm. They arguing about a bit of money between the clubs and then Burnley left up and it was like, that's the right thing to do. Um, me, the way they played, Everything was just perfect for me when I went there. And I just, I, I don't know, I feel like I, I just had a bit of res respect when I went there. It was just like, yeah, he's good kind of thing. Mm. And obviously, I just, it's, it's a mentality thing as well because I scored on my first home game there. And then he just kind of just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like every day was the same sort of thing. You know your routine. You know what you're doing. You work hard. Like Sean Dyche picked with it. Like you do this, you do that, you do. It. And footballers need routine. As much as what was it like playing for him? No, I loved it. Loved every second of he it. He seems like a top man. 
No, he's wicked. He's wicked. You know what? He's a he's a um, managers and managers. You want them to be managers. Like I don't believe in people that are bigger than managers. I don't like. I don't like all of that. You know what I mean? They they have to do a job, and I think everyone everyone at Burnley respected him as that's the gaffer. That's the end. Of, that's it. Be on the end of. Same way people look at Man United and respect Sir Alex Ferguson, no matter who he was, no matter how big he was, mm-hmm. that is the gaffer. Same way Ronaldo talks about him now. It's like his dad. Yeah, literally. And I think Sean Dyche had that same influence, you know what I mean? Even when he's having his... his everyone has their days where you, you probably don't like him at that minute or whatever, but overall, you know that you could even talk to him personally about anything and he's, he's, he's there with you, you know what I mean? It's, it was... I loved every minute of Burnley, honestly. And um, like I said, I got off on a, on, a, on a good start and went from there, man. Like, we literally just, we all wanted the same thing. We was all in the same mm-hmm. boat. And it just, it literally just went from one from one extreme to the other. And we just kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. And then, uh, it's, it's the um, typical thing to say when footballers win awards and, individual awards and say, oh, thanks to my teammates, but literally, I literally couldn't have done it yeah, without yeah, yeah. the coaching because they played to my strengths. And was it tough to leave Burnley? Oh, massive. That was, that's the biggest decision I've had to make in my career. Above. Right, okay. 100%. But, um, I don't know, football's very political as well. People don't understand that. Like, People mm. How do you mean? How do you mean? No, nah, like people always look at it like I was forced to exit, or they forced to exit, or this happened, that happened, and it was never. Like, these things don't hardly ever happen. Like sometimes, like things just happen for a reason. It. Like, I met my girl now a year before that, and she lived down south, and then like this, and then Watford come in, and it's like, well, wow, it's mad because. 40 minutes from where she where she lives. Yeah. So there's all little things that, that go on behind the closed doors that people will never understand in it. You don't know if Burnley wanted to... No one knows if Burnley wanted to offer me a new contract. They had a year left. Yeah. No one knows if they offered it me or I turned it down or I told them I want to leave or anything. Like, the business at the end of the day. Um, I loved it there and I literally... The offer came in and whatever, and I, I spoke. I, I sat down with my closest people and whatever, and spoke about it, and just like try a new challenge in it. Like I, I, I went to Burnley wanting to get promoted to the Premier League. I did it. Mm-hmm. Second season, I'm like, yo, I'm in the Premier League. It's mad. Let's stay up, and mm-hmm. and establish myself to play in the Premier League and and and, and sustained our status in there and I did that. Yeah. So it was just like one of them things like do I go or do I stay? And I just I, I leaped in it. There's personal things that were motivated me as well. But I just I just took the leap man. And it's football. And yeah. <laughs> you like saying oh you snake this that and the other but it's <laughs> part of the happening in it and you gotta do what you feels right at the time in it and, and that's what I did. To be honest, personally, for me, I'm happy you went to Watford because that brought you and Troy Deeney together. And on the pitch, you guys look like you have a great relationship. But off the pitch, it looks even better. What is it like playing with Deeney? Because you two, for me personally, I think two of the realest footballers. You guys say your mind, you don't care, and you're unapologetic about it. No, I've known known Troy before. I went to Watford. Okay. Me and him have got on, got on from time. Um, and we've always had that kind of relationship. Obviously, he's got closer since I, I, I moved there. Um, but again, I, I, like, Troy's my guy, man. Like, I, I look up to him and I respect what he's done. And we, we both come from, from, from similar, similar backgrounds and we share some of the same views. And... He's not afraid to tell me something different. I'm not afraid to tell him something different. You know what I mean? But a lot of people don't like what we've got to say. And that's because they don't understand where we Shit's real out here, man. Like, there's, we, we see things from a different perspective. We we see things beyond the media. We see things that go on day to day. And mm. that's because I'm from these areas. 
You know what I mean? And people think people think we're robots, but I ain't a robot. I won't say certain things now because I ain't trying to get phoned and 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 do bans and all all of these mm. things. But I have a strong opinion on on, on things, one hundred percent. And meaning we speak about these things. You know what I mean? Obviously now he's my captain and and whatever, and I disagree on a few things that I believe in, and it's vice versa. It's part and parcel, but. Mm. I mean, I got a lot of respect for them. I mean, do you think it's disappointing that, like, you're basically saying that you have to kind of bring yourself down, as your personality down for the media? That do you think that's a disappointing aspect of of the media at the moment? Yeah, it's always been like that, though. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't trust them because. They'll do interview me one day and they'll find something out about me the next day and then boom, boom, boom. Like, the media involves the, like, I will never do a media interview for Express and Star, I don't think, ever again. That's the bro. What, what happened with them? Because my boy went to jail for a charge and I was at the front page of the paper about bad boy record signing Grey. This, that, never brought. Involved in it. That was the head, the headline of it, and it had nothing to do with me. Just because my boy, like, ridiculous. People like that, I'm like, listen, I'm from your area, and I've done well. I've come out of your area and 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 done my thing. Like, respect that. Don't drag me down and try and put my name on something like that. Is my friend like whatever my brethren does, it's nothing to do with me in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm different to most people. People will sit there and say, oh, your friends this. Be careful. Yes, of course, I understand that. But when your friends are not bringing it around you and and whatever, don't ask me no. Don't don't tell me about nothing because I've not not got into any problems with these people and my friends. Never, not once. You get me? I've been around mm. them. Nothing's happened. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? So when 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 my friend gets arrested and 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 goes to jail for something, why am I why am I the picture on the front page of the thing? Yeah, it's ridiculous. That bad boy, eighty million pound striker, grey, something something. And I'm like, yo, they had nothing. They had one picture of me and him together. So and like, what is it that's making them even call you uh, a, a bad boy in the first place? Do you know they, what I mean? They don't like the truth. And I don't like, I'm just like, yeah, I was a bad boy in it. I didn't, I did bad things. I fucked, I made mistakes in it. So, so what? Why can't you, why don't you put out in the paper how I've come out of that and maybe like my friend's gone to jail for this, but I'm now an 80 million pound player. player. Mm. Why do you write it like that? Why you got to write it like I had something to do with the thing? Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm, so I'll just, you know what? Uh, I'm letting life in it. You just got you just got to smile at some people, man, and just might move on. Yeah, Andre, I'm gonna have to r- come out and bring you back in, yeah, because it's it hit its timer. Yeah, yeah? yeah. So I'm just gonna start again. All right. Yeah. So we'll just touch in on obviously the <laughs> issues in the media. Like, do you think that's also a racial thing as well? Oh, 100 percent. Mm. 100%. I've not experienced it personally. No, what I'm on about, yeah. That that thing, I feel like it was personal, the one in Wolves. No, I just said, like, yo, I'm done with talking about it kind of thing because it, mm. like, Dermy's name gets brought up every second, bro. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one understands, like, before they want to understand, uh, presume, um, and, you know what I mean? Make an assumption of somebody. Like, when he came out about his tattoo on his leg, I'm like, you know, I don't know where this shit comes from, you know. You don't, you don't know him. You don't know what he's been through. And when he came out with why he had it and that, it's like, bro, fucking you know, like... You had meaning to it. You know what I mean? Like, I've got a tattoo, you're going gonna, you're gonna to stop like me now because Malcolm X was in some black power terrorist school or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and they want to make... I could tell what, that's something that definitely like, affects you hard, innit? No, it just it, it pisses me off, bro, because like it's it's issue in it, but the way people look at it now, yeah, that are not 
our color is yeah, ain't that bad. You ain't getting very slavery. You got jobs you're making this money a week. That and the other day, like as if like they've done something for us and that makes up for it. You get me? Mm. So it's, what's the point in even speaking about it now? You know what I'm saying? Like, but do you think like with your teammates, for example? Like, obviously, you've got black teammates, you've got white teammates. Is this something that's d- discussed between both? Do the white players understand what is going on in the media as well? Yeah, some of them still. Some of them. Mm. I've had them and, and they do. But underst- I just don't I, don't, I don't think someone from a different race would ever really understand it. A white person just wouldn't understand it deeply. They'd, they'd get it. could sit there and tell him about it, but like, they would never get it because you can't feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like, with the whole, um, like, the thing about the way I see it, like, with the whole thing in the media, it's something that right. I feel like is not going to really change much because I don't think that, personally, I don't think that many black players or even as vocal about it. Yeah, we could talk about Raheem Sterling, we could talk about Dean, we can talk about a few players, but I think a lot of people have the mentality that it's like, do you know what, I'm just not going to say nothing because it's long. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like that's something that happens a lot in this country. The black play, black British players especially, just like, do you know what, I can't be bothered. But I think if everyone starts to speak out a little more, then it could be a difference. If the, if the Rashfords and the, the real big hitters started speaking out in it a little bit more, then I think there'll be something. But I think the mentality of these players nowadays from the outside looking in, they just want to get on with it. And, it, and if, it, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Like, do you think that's the case? I don't know because I've had different mentalities with it all, in it? Like, sometimes I want to speak out about it and sometimes I'm like, you know what, yeah, just just, just kill them in success. And, and like, do things that piss them off that they don't like, but they can't say nothing about. Like, mm. I live in a flipping stuck-up neighbourhood and they look at my dog and that and look at us like, look at me and my girl and think like, wow, oh, like, looking at us funny and that. <laughs> no, I said, on, let's walk. Let the dog off the lead. Let him do what he's doing. If you're scared of my dog, you're scared of my dog. That's your business. Like, you know what I'm saying? My mm. dog ain't just going to for no reason. But you're looking at us because of, it's us that are walking the dog that we think we've got some bad boy dog, some 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 killer dog or something or yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? You've got that idea in your head. The same way it's like us. The, the first time when I was at Brentford, I went to buy that X6, yeah? I went there in my tracksuit with my boys. No, it was a different car, but I went to the... I purposely went there with my boys on purpose. Oh, and I was influenced by the 50 Cent film and it got Richard Dye trying or whatever. But it was intriguing to see how they deal with you and how they act. They didn't want to ask, you know how a salesman, you know how a salesman go, when you walk in there, they want to know, oh, you're right, you're looking for something specific, where, where. They didn't say a word to us, just let us walk around the studio like it was nothing until I wanted to go and buy the car, whatever. That is the world we live in now. You could go to Harrods or whatever, where you hold on or whatever, the screw is going to look at you funny when you're black. It's a, it's a fact. I'm mixed race, but no one ain't classing me as white. The classing me as black. So yeah, that's... Nah, of course. I speak about it because that's how it is. Before anyone asks me, like, oh, you mixed race, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> want... Clarify that quickly. Tell me that white boy over there, you say, that black lad over there. That's what people would say. So, but, mm-hmm. yeah, everyone's... So it's like, it gets to the point now where it's like, I'm not going to dress up and, and, and go to these places or whatever to please people that don't care about me or don't even look at me like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, dress how I like to dress and do what I want to do. And whatever. I can afford it, innit? I can do this, I can do that. Like, I want to prove. So, yeah. And why some footballers wouldn't say certain things in it because it's kind of like, you know what, yeah? Let me just, like you said, right, for, for Rashford, for instance, yeah, like, let me just kill them with success. You can be racist to me all you want. I'm going to score, I'm going to score, I'm going to score, I'm going to score. I'm playing for England. What can you say? Mm. I understand that mentality as well, you get me? Because 
as much as we're speaking out and whatever, what is actually changing? You know what I'm saying? People are dispersing what happened. Nothing's happening. So nothing's really changing anyway, even though we are speaking out. Like, nothing's really happening. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because when Troy and them got, got racist abuse after we beat Wolves in FA Cup semi-final, nothing happened. He got arrested. And nothing happened. The charges got dropped or whatever. Get the fool up because he's from Wolves. I know everyone you hang around with, you idiot. Yeah. I can get hold of you. And then <laughs> send, send an apology video. But I'm like, you know what I'm saying? He's... Mm. People are full, so it, like it's it's a difficult one still. I can't, I, I, I ain't got the answers to it, innit? Yeah. Everyone's different in terms of it. And again, everyone's got different backgrounds because if you're not from a, if you're from a, if you grew up in a nice area, you wouldn't really have that view, you know what I mean? Because you grew up around it, you kind of, it's normal to you to be oppressed and, and, and whatever. It's like growing up yeah. in Spain. You know what I'm saying? They, they talk about black people. Is, to us, it sounds racist, but to them, it's a normal thing. You know what I mean? The way I, the way I see it as well is like, with your, like, with, you had an incident, that 2012 incident, your tweets um, about the, you know, the homophobic stuff or whatever, they, they brought that back from 2016 when you became a pro. You got a four game ban for that, right? When, and now when you put that in perspective, John Terry, the England captain, got a four game ban for racially abusing. Anton Ferdinand, do you know what I mean? So that's kind of how I see they, how they balance up racism, in my, in my opinion. Like, they're giving somebody a ban. The England captain, who's meant to be the representative of the whole country, basically, is getting the same ban as... How old were you in, in them time? Probably eight, 18? 20? Probably, like, 20? Okay, you know, it was about... Yeah, sort of like that. Yeah, Nine, about 1920, as a non-league footballer, you got treated the same way as the England captain for racial abuse. And that, that sets a precedent for me. Mm. No, 100%. Um, I think, again, the media's got a big part to play in that as to how they put it out there. You know what I mean? Um, but, again, different scenario, different situations, different mm. terms, people. How did you feel about that situation in terms of it digging up from the past and getting in trouble for it once you made it as a, as a, in the Premier League? It was what it was at the time and it was kind of like flipping heck, like I don't even know I did that kind of thing because that's how, that's how far it was, a long ago it was, sorry. Um, we just one of them things in it, like I know who I am now at the time, even then, like I know who I am now, but I mean like even then I knew who I was, I knew where I've, how I've grown up, how how I am now as a person. So I dealt with it completely. I was just like, listen, that ain't me. So you can find me, you can ban me, whatever. I know my true self now, innit? Like, I was a product of my environment or whatever. I always said it. I didn't know any different. And this is what it was. I've learned a lot. And mm. I keep learning. Now I've learned and the things I was saying were wrong, innit? But at the time, I, I've... Some of them were jokes, some of them were probably serious or whatever. But at the time, I didn't know no different. I had probably, what, 30 people on there? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. My area and people that... <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, I regret everything that I, I, I spoke about and that, but at the same time, like... It didn't upset me or anything because I knew that I already knew that mistake anyway, and I knew who I was, who I am, and I just know that I've I've grown. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like you see, you'll see it everywhere, and you make mistakes. It's 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 where you it's where you it's where you take it from there, and I grew from it. So, so from there, obviously, um, you as you get older, I've seen you say that. You started kind of learning about the whole black history thing only a few years ago. And of course, that obviously inspired you to get the craziest back tattoos that I've seen, the sickest ones that I've seen. 
talk us through those ones because you got Muhammad Ali, you got Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks. So obviously big prominent figures in the black um, black power movement. What do they? What do those people mean to you? No, nah, you know what it was. Yeah? It started from um, Roots and it. That's the first prop. Like, obviously, I watched Django and whatever, but Roots was the first real, real hard hitting, hard hitting thing I watched. So that made me proper look into it more. And then I remember being in Dubai and I, I seen a picture of Ali with the newspaper and stuff, and I kind of got the idea from that. So I started with that and Mandela, and then it just grew from there, really. But I, I didn't want to get no one tattooed on me that I didn't understand or didn't know in it. So yeah, each one when I was speaking to Jess, my tattoo is to buy it. Was that like, ah, oh, let's? She mentioned these people or whatever. So I looked them up first before I even did anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Just kind of studied along the way. Obviously, it took a long time to get the tattoos and and, and whatever. Um, but yeah, just kind of, just kind of understood it, man, and just mm -hmm. just got in. Um, but Roots was the the real eye opener. And now I've got him on my ribs, Kunta Kente. That's the new one. No, for real. Is there anyone? Is there anyone from the new gen that you think maybe one day could potentially end up on on your body? Tough one, man. Things are different now. I think it, Cap for real. Kaepernick, maybe. Kaepernick, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did a big thing. He did a big thing with the whole, um, with the standing, with the kneeling, with the kneeling thing. That was a massive step. What I don't think any, I don't think any footballer uh, is at that point. I'll be honest, bro, because <laughs> we've got bills to pay and whatever, and and he's messed up to say it. And it, that's this is the argument now with, with everybody. It's like, are we going to really do something or what? You know what I'm saying? And it's mm -hmm. a different situation to be in. But that's why I respect him for what he did because he's just like, yo, I don't care, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Again. One thing that I found super interesting um, about your tattoos is that with the um, the Olympians that obviously did the Black Power, um, you've got all three of them on your back. You've got Peter Norman, who is the white Australian athlete. And when he did it, it was obviously a massive, a massive thing because a white man is obviously on the same side as the Black Panther, um, Black, pa um, Black Panthers, sorry. So how is it that you, do you think that's something that might need to happen in this country? Like a big white football player, basically just calling it out for what it, for what it is. Let's give Harry Kane, for example, let's say, captain of England. If he was to come out and say, the way the media talk about black people, the way they portray black people in the papers, on the news, anywhere, is totally unacceptable. Do you think there'll be a start, like, maybe a bigger movement going on from there? Mm. I don't know. I don't think... I had this conversation earlier with people and no one cares enough. So I don't mm. make a lot of noise, of course, but it's not about noise. It's not about being heard. It's about change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So unless something's going to happen to make a change, then, and, and, and right now, if I'm being deadly honest, uh, what is going to change? How can we change it? What is going to change a grown man's opinion, a grown woman's opinion? What they've grew up to know is we are this, we are that, mm. whatever. So now you're going to change their opinion. It's like, it's near nothing possible really I, until. I, I feel like, um, I feel like when you look at who these players speak to, for example, and that's why I respect you and um, Troy a lot because you guys have popped up on, on black podcasts. You guys have popped up on, spoken to black media people. Do you think that is something that needs to come in more, black people in the media? And that's what we're trying to do here at 360. We're trying to represent the culture differently. So do you think that's something that needs to be integrated more? Because the stories, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, they're being, they're being written by, by a white man. 
who doesn't he doesn't care about where you're from, doesn't care about your upbringing. Do you think that's something that needs to come through? No, hundred percent, definitely. Because I think that's why I've done this with you lot because I respect how you lot go about what you're posting. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. Whatever you lot are posting, it's not gossip or whatever. It's not controversial. It's not. You know what I'm saying? It's not. Not a typical blog. I don't like them typical blogs because when something bad's happened, you're gonna post it, and 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 put your little two pence in about it. You know what I'm saying? And I respect you lot for not doing that. You just posting what you see and the facts of what they are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, appreciate like, that. Seeing you not post anything about what the paper have said, like, oh, this allegedly happened kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I respect that because at the end of the day, you don't, you don't want to go online and see some, some full, full blog posting up some foolishness that's apparently happened and it has nothing even has happened. It's just going to be like the papers. You might as well be the Daily Mail. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we've got to stick together in it because you, you you see what Jamal Edwards has done and 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 people like that mm -hmm. and brought our own culture and and brought it into the mainstream. There's, there's opportunities, man. There's, there's there's big things that can happen from it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, and we all have to. At the end of the day, we all have to help each other, and that's not even. The same way every other race does. They all help each other. You know what I'm saying? So, as long as we all stick together and, and, and just build our own brand in it and everyone do their own thing and just support it and, and, and whatever. And everyone can make a living in it at the end of the day. And everyone can support and, and, and try and make a change. It's not going to take a, a 20, 30 black Premier League footballers. It's going to take the whole country and, and, and different walks of life, different careers, different lives, and, and to, to try and make something different so it's not even a conversation that we need to have because we've got our own. Word. You know, it goes back to all the things you, that you listen to and, and, and see about. You have Chinatown, you have an area which is Indian cultured and we're all looking after each other, our own businesses. Chinatown, Italy, Little Italy, or whatever. And they got their own. If they care about and and whatever, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel just like as long as we just do our own thing and, and try and build that, then we can. Yeah. We will go past speaking about it. It's kind of like you just you just be fake. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> saying, like you can you can say the, all the words in the world you want. Like we're good over here. And that, that's the best thing. Me, personally, at this moment in time, I can't see anything changing to that extent in terms of speaking out and whatever. So we have to do it as in our culture. Yeah. And the thing is, the, the, what's funny about it all is that the culture, like the black culture, is what's actually inspiring all of the corporates right now. Everything you see from the corporates, they're doing because they're taking it from the black culture so it's kind of like i find it a bit disappointing you know when sometimes you might you might a, a footballer might not want to do an interview with this person or that person and you know that's been organized by people in the culture but then a week later you see them doing a bbc you see them doing a, a you see that they've spoken to someone in the telegraph or anything like that so i feel like what you said is completely right in terms of Sticking together is the most important thing. And I feel like black people as a race, we're the ones that are most divided when it comes to sticking together. No, we are, but it's, I don't think we're, we're to blame at the same time because this is what we've been brought to know in it. This is normal for us. This is what's been bred into us to, to hate, mm. to go against each other and all of this. You know what I'm saying? So... It's um, it's a tough one because we all, as as footballers in the media and stuff, we turn down certain things in it, and we get told to turn down, and at the same time we get told to turn down certain things, or people at the club or agents or whatever will say, won't even tell us about certain interviews we could have done or whatever because mm. they've got a job to protect us in it, and what's going to boost, maybe boost our profile or be good for us. And whatever. So a lot of things footballers might not know. 
Mm. Uh, same way, like, you just, you might not see a, a DM or, you know what I'm saying, just bare little things. I, I don't think we do enough, but I, I don't think a lot of it is personal where they'll do it with the Telegraph rather than someone like yourself. Mm. Whatever. I don't think it's all the time that deep. A lot of the time, Do you yeah. think... <coughs> you go on. A lot of the time, yes, but I just feel like, listen, I'm, I'm who I am, innit? Yeah. <laughs> I'm different, boys, at the end of the day, so I don't know how they go about certain things, but I know that for them, it's probably the fact, like, I can't even go to the Tesco to get milk without getting hungry. Word to, the word to low <laughs> you know, yeah. Low ski, so, I can't even go to Tesco anymore. <laughs> So imagine doing that and then coming back and people want to do interview with you and whatever. It's kind of like, now nah, I want to be left. I want to want to be in my house and you know what I'm saying, be normal. So it's everyone's different, isn't it? Everyone's got a different way way of living, views on it. So yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, when so Raheem Sterling spoke today. Not anything about this media stuff previously, but he spoke about um the expression. Of, of black players, he said that he feels that the expression in this country compared to like America is totally different. Do you think that's that's true? Because when I look in America, for example, I feel like I see free spirits, people doing what they want to do, they say what they want to say. But in this country, it's very, everyone's very pressed in. Do you think that comes from the agents? Well, who's that coming from? That message to like, yo, chill. Media. Again, because I don't know if you're watching um, M. Mark's documentary, and I'm seeing him after the game smoking cigar, drinking beer, night before the game is, mm. before the game is playing golf. You know, if that came out about a footballer doing that. It's top level. Like if they seen all right, where he uh, is. The top of his game, like he's the best English player now for me. At this moment in time, he's the best English player. Yeah. Guy Rashford. We move. Yeah, he's up there, but Raheem Sterling is doing his damn thing. He's taking the piss. Yeah, he's doing things that people never thought he could do. So, if he played golf or got caught smoking a cigar or whatever. He would get crucified, crucified in the press. Like he gets crucified for posting a picture of a flipping these back garden, yeah. or something like dumb things like that. You know what I'm saying? So I watched that documentary last week. Smoking cigar. I'm thinking, yo, no, it's mad. I know what I said about Michael Jordan. You know, because no one can say it because he's doing his thing. He's doing what he needs to do on the court. The same way Raheem Sterling is doing his thing on the pitch. Mm -hmm. So then the culture is so different because you, again, it's like we're robots. Like we can't, we don't have a life. It's, 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 a, it's illegal to do anything normal. You know what I'm saying? We have an example to set, of course, but at the same time, you cannot follow a man and chase him around with a camera if he's at a restaurant or at a club at a weekend or whatever and, and portray it as if he's doing something wrong because it's baffling, like it's like it's not normal like as if it's not normal, like as if no one's allowed to do anything if you play football. It, it's weird. And I, that that Michael Jordan document you just solidified it for me because I'm like, yo, this man's doing what he's doing and no one can tell him nothing. Nothing. It's only he had that it becomes a thing. And I I don't even think it's Anything else, I think it's just football. I don't think it's cricket or mm. golf or anything. It's just, just football. It's just like we're just put on these big lights on us all the time to say, like, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. But the facts are, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring my kid up to tell him that this is right or wrong and what I'm doing if I went out at night and make him feel like it's completely wrong. Because mm. Is normal, like we're humans, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna move on from there. 
racism side of things and that and we'll go into a little bit of things that are a little bit of a lack. We obviously go to Jamaica. Have you ever considered paying for Jamaica? And why haven't you by now? Because I have a passport issue. A passport issue? That is all. That's the only reason. So you have, so you are actually paying for Jamaica? So then? what I'm trying to sort out, but that's my plan. That's what I want to do. Honestly, I think if you get the right players, you can proper do well in it and it'd be sick for the culture. It'd be because you see what it's like when Usain's running, boy. Me yeah. Crowd. yeah. So, right. if we if we do well with Jamaica, then you know what I'm saying it'd be a yeah. big thing. Hopefully, it's little little the tiniest dumbest discretion that's gone on me, but basically, literally a letter in my last name. Oh, that's crazy! They always tell me they put an E instead of an A. That's what they did. Messed yeah, it yeah. Up. Yeah. So I need to change. It. I need to try and change it because obviously my birth name and my family name is G R A Y. Mm. But the idiots put G I E Y as my. Uh, oh, yeah, but it's been a bit of a nightmare. But hopefully, hopefully it can get sorted. I was looking through like the players who could have been eligible for Jamaica, and you look through it's Sterling, you've got Small, Kyle Walker, Walker, Antonio, Ox, yourself, Leon Bailey, Danny Rose, Morgan. That could have been. That could have been. <laughs> Serious team, you know. Ravel Morrison, I think go go and say him as well, like. Ah, uh, serious, serious team. Trust me. It's it's bad. Yeah, yeah, man. Then for that. It'd be good, man. And um, uh, one other thing as well. One thing that I've noticed: you're proper into your style. You're proper into your drip. You're into your sauce. Who do you think? Is I've got one. I've got one that I think can match you on the drip thing. Who do you think can match you when it comes to drip? Me? Oh, shit. I don't know, you know. I'm a bit of a follow fashion still. Are you? Yeah. I'm from Wolves, man. Like, us, us man, like I said, like, up north, yeah, like, we're late on, on, on fashion and that. So, when all these things come into play when we was in Wolves, like, London man have been doing it from time. Remember the long laces where you used to miss a, a big <laughs> yeah, yeah behind on that. But like no Monaco style now still. But I don't know who I match, but I'm trying to just I, I, I'm not a fashion guru and I ain't gonna be out there or outlandish and that. I'll just I'll just wear that I things that I like in it and just dress how I feel fits me nice. Yeah. I think when it comes to I think you and Ginny at Liverpool are like gone. I think you guys are up there top two when it comes to the drip. But nah, man, but you're just thinking in thinking brands, bro. You need I don't drip ain't brands because we can all Yeah, no, nah, you just seen a couple of pictures because I did a couple of pictures in an LV jacket or whatever. That's that ain't drip really when you think about it. It's about how you you know what I'm saying? You can like, mm -hmm. you could wear plain jeans and and look good like maps. Yeah, at Watford, yeah, Marriott. But you don't wear designer. But okay. he drip. Like, it comes to training. Like he would be wearing an ASOS hoodie or whatever, and he's dripping because of the way he's carrying it. And uh, you know what I'm saying? It's not always like we're caught up in this thing where it's like, yo, it's got LV jacket on. You know, it's mad. He looks good. like I do that as well, but. At the same time, it's like, I can't compare to Ronaldo. No way. That man's... That why, man's why, why not? That, money, that man's money is... Yeah, yeah, yeah That's yeah. That, that. Netherlands, <laughs> that Dutch Premier League Championship money, blood, different yeah. levels. So we had um, a few questions come in. We had a lot of questions come in from uh, people talking about that we they want to ask you questions basically so I've got like three questions mm -hmm. who's the best player that you played with oh, I see this thing with, uh, Richarlison I said Richarlison what's he like? the bad boy 
head into the top? 100% without a doubt. Without a doubt. You reckon yeah. you can start for the top, top six teams now? Bro, it starts with Brazil. What are you talking about? Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Ooh. Brazil in the Copa America it says it all trust me when he get he's any young as well still a baby the boy is serious and what about the best player that you've played against um, Hazard Hazard yeah the boy is rude that's Let's why talk about Hazard man because rude. a lot of pros have had the best player they've played against but when you a lot of people, like fans, just because, you know, he hasn't got the goals and he hasn't got whatever. But a lot of pros talk about him as two gone. Listen, I'll tell you one thing now, yeah. 95% of fans don't understand football. They're all caught up in... Nah, as in, they understand football, but they don't understand the terms of a class, class player. And uh, somewhat like, like I've been arguing with my boys all the time, and we're having this dis dispute about Busquets. And I'm saying, do you not understand how serious Busquets is as a footballer? Like, he's going. It's the same way with Scholes. People only respect Scholes now because he's retired, and you had like Xavi and and and, and them man saying like, "Yo, he's the best man I played against." Before that, no one used to speak about him like that. We always knew Scholes was sick, but you need. To Thought about him because of his goals. You don't think about the things when he's, he's licking 70, 80 yard balls and the man don't have to move. And same way with Busquets when he's chopping man on the edge of his area and starting counter attacks. And because when you play here, yeah, it's like people talk about Pogba and that. Yeah. And it annoys me because I'm like, every time I've played against Pogba, it's probably been about four times now, five times. No one can get near him. Might not set the world on fire and score a top corner goal or do the craziest assist, but you cannot get near the kid. Like he, he, he just on a, his brain and whatever. He just, he just, he's somewhere you're not. Like and you, you just can't fathom it. You know what I'm saying? And until you're on the pitch with him, you'll never understand. From the stands, it's like, oh, he just turned him, or he just took this control. Listen, when you play the game and really understand that when you're in the midfield and the positions there, yeah, and you got four men around you and you take it, bro. I'm telling you now, people cannot fathom certain people. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I say that because he's just the one person that really stood out to me on one day. I'm not saying he is the best I've played against. I've played against the De Bruyne's, the Guerreros, or whatever. You probably would say it better. But that the one day was him because he came out he's rude, bro. The man days is undone. And just I don't know. Like you can't you can't even I don't even see people train like he does sometimes and that day when we played Chelsea was just like I don't know, it's like it's mad that like, when you're a footballer, yeah. Like me, yeah, I can't decide to turn it on or turn it off. I'm not good enough to do that. Like, I'm not that at that level where I could feel like I can't be bothered. Or, oh, yeah, let me just... He has that capability to just say, oh, fuck this, come, let's do it. Like, it's on now, kind of thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And he had that ability. He laces under and that. He just said, like, boom. Remember, I lost the ball on the edge of my box, on their box, and they went, he was run with the ball and scored. And he was like, How have, this was my first season in the Premier League. Like, I can't believe I've lost the ball on the edge of the 18 yard box, and they've gone the over end in four seconds and scored. He's run with the ball and it's gone. That was because he can just switch it on in a, in a split second. And I'm telling you now, footballers will understand until you're. On the pitch with a man like that, with a man like him, Pogba, Fabregas, the bear man, I'm telling you. The Steelers. People are asking in the comment. People are asking in the comment. Pogba or Kane? Pogba who? Pogba or Corona? 
Ui. Ross. It's a tough one still. Oh, you see. Oi. I don't know, you know. Oh my God. Fans will say KDB is long. Yeah, obviously, because I don't understand the game like that. But it proves in the puts, isn't it? No, of course, I hear that. I hear that, of course. But listen, you... Okay, all you fans out there and that, you seen how Pogba was going on in the World Cup last year. You seen what capable of on his own when he's in the change room screaming at them and, 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 and motivating them and doing these things. That's true, that's true. You don't see that, you know? Bro, you're forgetting, yeah, football's all down to, it's not just ability and that, you know, it's pressure and everything. You see Bayol and people like this going to Real Madrid and that, yeah? Things change, man. Things different. That's why people don't respect Benzema like they should. Because he's been at Real Madrid for many years and he's been the bad boy for many, many years. And you no know, one can face him. You know, ball. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, though? No. But like, people were like, nah, he ain't world class. Bro. What are you talking about? Real Madrid has not signed a, a, a number nine striker in all them years. He says it all. So, like, I'm on the fence with KDB and Blah. But at the same time, you could play Pogba holding mm -hmm. mid. You couldn't. I won't De Bruyne holding mid. You want De Bruyne to just do his thing, but the same way you'd want Pogba to do his thing because it's the same, I don't know. It's a tough one. I'm gonna push you for an answer. One player for taking a team. You have you have ninety million. No, no, no. Name me a name me a team that right. you put there. Okay, your Real Madrid tomorrow. Hundred million. You have. Money, KDB and Pogba have said, I want to join you. Who are you putting that 100 million on? Uh, who's midfielder? Madrid now, Modric, Cruz. Modric, Cruz and Casemiro. KDB. No, but that's, only because, that's only because I'd rather KDB play further ahead of Modric and let Modric sit or Cruz sit and let them two float around do their thing you know I what I'm saying it. different I respect it scenarios and just to uh, please you know all the other people out here what was the camp like when you guys beat Liverpool I know you didn't play that game but what was it like you guys you 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 done something so good for the country, honestly. Nah, yo, we just thinking about Isma. Like, yo, why is this youth so good? Mm. What's he like? Is he a, is he a top boy? Huh? Is he a, is he a top player? Listen, Isma Lasar. Yeah, just remember the name. I'm telling you. <laughs> nah, it's not a joke. I promise you. He got signed for big money as well. Not even that, bro. I listen, the U is serious. He's serious. Nah, I'm looking forward to it. Barney said it. Yo, listen. People are, listen, people watched him in the... Was it the African Cup? Was it the last Cup that Senegal did well? Yeah. Last one, yeah. Listen. <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing about him, but you lot will. I promise you now, you you'll get to understand. I, hear he, it. I respect it. What he did to Liverpool that day was him. The team was we was unbelievable that day, top to bottom. But we saying Van Dijk didn't want none. Listen, no one wants that one on one smoke. It is man. I promise you now, no one wants it. I ain't seen no one that quick before. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's a real deal, and he's a baby, he's still a baby. But he's he's coming, yeah. Oh, he's already here, bro. I respect it. I respect it. Yeah, you guys, yeah. Ricardo and 
and saw future's bright. Charlie says you're Everton now, though. Good thing. Bugging. I'm bugging. You're right. You're right. You're schooling me, eh? Hey, you're schooling me. Um, final question that I, I'm going to hit you is, it's the question that has been going on every single second on this live. How is your missus? This call, I think she's going in. But, uh, yeah, stop. Nah, she blessed, man. It was good, it was yeah. good. It was... Yeah, just nagging, but she called. Yeah, she's nagging. <laughs> Everyone's been asking, man. I had to ask you, man. Spot Andre, man, I do appreciate you coming on. Honestly, one of the players that we've been going for from the very start, man. Just pure real talk, and you've done it again. Pure real talk again. Like, is there anything else that you'd want to say? Just last messages to anybody or good? No, man, all good, bro. I think we covered a lot. Just everyone just don't... I know everyone's fans and got an opinion and stuff, but just remember that everyone comes from different walks of life, you know, and everyone's everyone's different. Everyone's got a different opinion in it. Just, re just respect that. Um, and just don't, don't read everything you believe in it because we're all induced in this social media thing, but... Everyone can put out their own agenda in it without knowing the actual facts. Um, so don't judge anyone until you meet them and, and, and make your own judgment in it. So come on, man. And don't worry, man. After this, you ain't gonna see no fabricated storylines and stuff. It's the real it's the real here, man. Trust me. Uh, anyway, you did. <laughs> <Trust Yeah. me. laughs> All right, man. Appreciate you coming, man. And good luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully we see you playing again soon. Good luck, brother. Love, Love man. Bless. Yeah, man. Safe, safe. There we go, people. We're all done for that one. All done, all done. Thank you a lot for tuning in. Shout out Leah from Little Mix. Shout out everybody. We're going to end it with just a little... Chris in the audio. Chris in the audio. Billy Jean, Billy Jean. Chris in the audio.